the genuine article. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack. Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack, here with another issue of the genuine article. And today we're talking with David Holmes, who has many titles. He's the Scripps Professor of Medicine at the Mayo Clinic, well known to everyone, of course, and uh, soon to become the president of the American College of Cardiology. And David has recently put together a group of experts and authorities to address that very vexing problem of how do you deal with a patient who's a candidate for trip triple anticoagulant therapy, that's dual antiplatelet therapy, and, and Coumadin as well. David, uh, uh, tell me, is, is this really an increasing problem? It certainly is, Tony. As we think about the number of patients who are going to require both dual antiplatelet therapy for whether they have a, an acute coronary syndrome or a drug-eluting stent or for other reasons, as well as the number of patients who are going to require warfarin for the prevention of stroke with atrial fibrillation or a mechanical prosthetic valve, that group of patients is going to increase in frequency. And so we will be faced with the issue of trading off bleeding with triple antiplatelet therapy as well as with warfarin versus the issue of an acute ischemic event if we just take one or the other. Well, what kind of really good randomized clinical trials do we have available to us to guide us? As we think about evidence-based medicine, there isn't any evidence-based medicine in this regard. There are a small number of registry studies with small numbers of patients. But what they have done is to highlight the issue that those patients on triple therapy with dual antiplatelet therapy and warfarin face a three to five time increase in the frequency of bleeding. If you then go from dual antiplatelet therapy and warfarin to just warfarin and single antiplatelet therapy, they face an increase in the risk of an acute ischemic event related to not being on dual antiplatelet therapy. So indeed it is a trade-off between bleeding on the one hand and an acute ischemic event on the other hand. And it's very hard to negotiate that because there is very limited data. Well, given the limited data, when you and your colleagues got together, you did come up with some recommendations that we're about to publish in Jack uh, as to how one might go about doing this. I wonder if you could review those for us. These are the approaches, not based upon evidence, but based upon consensus of people that deal with this every day. Number one, if we're going to be using, for example, a drug-eluting stent, we need to decide Versus the, about the effects of long-term dual antiplatelet therapy versus the use of a bare metal stent. And so in those patients that are going to absolutely require warfarin therapy, consideration should be given to the use of a bare metal stent rather than a drug-eluting stent so we could decrease the need, the long-term need for dual antiplatelet therapy. That's the first thing. The second thing is in those patients in whom we are committed to dual antiplatelet therapy as well as warfarin, we need to keep several things in mind. Number one, we need to use the lowest dose of aspirin. One baby aspirin is fine to keep it into the 71 to 82 milligrams of aspirin. Number two, we would use the standard dose of the thenopyridine, such as Plavix. Number three, we're going to keep the INR under as tight a control as we possibly can, shooting for a little lower INR of 2 to 2.5. So as we think about it, those would be the hallmarks. The next question to be addressed is, should we use a proton pump inhibitor, given that most of the bleeding is GI bleeding? Some is intracerebral, but most is GI bleeding. And that is still a hotly debated topic with the recent trials that would indicate that if you give a proton pump inhibitor, it may inhibit some of the effects of clopidogrel. And so in that setting, until we have more data, we go carefully and cautiously with it. There are some people that have recommended a non-H2 blocking drug, such as Zantac or Pepsid, something like that. In those patients that develop bleeding on dual antiplatelet therapy and warfarin, that is more problematic. In those patients, the data would suggest if they have a stent in place that perhaps you should discontinue the aspirin rather than the clopidogrel. Those are really the recommendations. In those patients that 
develop bleeding that is acute, obviously then you need to stop most of the things and reverse most of the things and be prepared to tide them over an acute ischemic event. Well, those, those are excellent suggestions. I think everyone will realize that they come from the best thinking of people who've really studied this very intently and will look forward to randomized clinical trial data in the future. Thanks very much for being with us and thanks for viewing this video. Thank you very much. Have a great day. The Genuine Article, discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack.